Hello Enchanted Ones, and a blessed autumn to you all. This week, join me as I explore the enchanted woods, finding many autumn wonders. Join me as I make simple DIYs fit for any fairy, and that includes giving my fairy home a makeover. I change my altar for the season, and I delve into some altar work and simple rituals to harness the energy in the air. So sit back, relax, and join me today for a walk in the enchanted woods. This is delicious. Hello Enchanted Ones and welcome back. Happy autumn to you all. Hope you have had your first pumpkin spice latte by now and I hope it's beginning to feel like autumn wherever you are. It's been a very strange month for England and September in general because we had a heat wave at the beginning of September. It felt like autumn in August when I posted my It Smells Like Autumn video. So it's been this weird combination of autumn, summer, and now autumn once more. <laughs> so the weather has been really off this September, but also so has the energy. For much of September, my soul hasn't felt aligned with myself. So I was really looking forward to the changing of the season in hope that my soul would realign with myself. And well, my soul, is always waiting for me within the enchanted woods. Today, I am having a walk to find balance and peace within myself after a very busy month. During times like this, I turn to nature to help me find balance and the turning of the season is always a lovely reminder of balance. There are many signs of autumn in the woods now. It is a time where the sun is lower in the sky so we can appreciate the balance of highlights and shadows. A time where scattered yellow leaves begin to highlight the ground and a time where every gust of wind helps the leaves to gracefully fall to the ground. There are so many metaphors to find within autumn and today I wanted to collect things that were drawn to me to perhaps find more metaphors and messages when I do some altar work later on. The ferns within the woods are turning brown, partly because of the heat wave we had a few weeks ago, but they are beautiful nonetheless. Nestled amongst these ferns lies fir trees and recently I have been collecting fir cones and have begun to realise the beauty of each variety. And it's my mission this autumn to collect them all. And this fern-led path is great for finding autumn wonders. And I found much more than just fir cones this year. The beech trees within the woods hold a precious gem during autumn. Underneath this fairy door, lies these beech tree seed heads. These are just precious and these two will make excellent fairy hats for a craft I have in store later. I 
they also found a few more fur cones. This variety holds so much detail. And at last, even though they were still green, I found a fallen sweet chestnut. These remind me of little hedgehogs. And once I saw the green of one sweet chestnut, I noticed green everywhere, highlighted in little spots around the woods. I felt like the greens of the wood were putting on a final display for me today as the sun shone upon them. Because with each autumn, it feels bittersweet. It's a wanting of the beautiful reds and greens, but a goodbye of the greens and the new life we once wanted in spring. One thing I was very pleased to see today though was a bit of yellow and that is this staghorn jelly fungus that I call fairy fires. I usually find them growing amongst the fir trees in boggy soil and this fairy home has given me quite the idea. As you may know, I too have a fairy home and well, it's about time I give it an autumn makeover. I'm not attracted to the colours of the crystals on the display shelf anymore. I need oranges, citrines, woods, sunstones and calcites. And these mini leaves were so cute that I had to sprinkle them within the fairy home. But it was missing one last touch. And that was some fairy toadstools. So I decided to recreate the fairy fires and I made loads of mistakes making these so you don't have to. I wanted a surface that glue didn't stick to so I made coral shapes with a glue gun onto this piece of plastic and well it failed. I then decided to use card and make coral shapes on this tearing them off and then tediously trying to rip the paper off underneath. But what you don't know is that a quick Google will tell you that glue from a glue gun will not stick to silicone. And all I had was this cat mug silicone cover. And it worked a dream. I drew the little coral like flames onto this and then peeled them off effortlessly. Once I had built up a collection of these, I then placed a few of them into a big blob of glue, allowing it to be one whole structure. I mixed up a tone of paint to match the flames and I loved how the texture of the glue gun gave it a translucent effect similar to the fungi and glued at the bottom a little PVA and dipped them into the fairy moss. Once I got the hang of making these, they were so easy. So I placed them here and there on the fairy home and it was just the yellowy autumn touch it needed to keep the fairies warm this autumn during the long nights. But for now, back to the forest. And once I saw one fairy flame, I kept seeing them everywhere. At this point in the walk, I began my journey down the healing trail. And it is here that the autumn sun shines through beautifully. But also there is a balance of dark shadows that come of this, giving a beautiful balance of light and dark. It made me contemplate how I've been feeling recently and how I've been so busy putting energy into the wrong places and feeling cut off from my true purpose. There are decisions I need to make to give myself the life I truly want. 
but I am to wait until the energy is high during Samhain before I let any decisions manifest into reality. For now, during this equinox, I am in contemplation, thinking about the pros, the cons, and trying to figure out a decision that is purely based upon my own judgment rather than being swamped with others' opinions. But sometimes, let's face it, that's hard to do. So, I look to nature for answers when I need a bit of help, whatever that may be. So signs from our ancestors and spirit guides may be more prominent right now. And for the third time on this walk, I saw a white feather blow towards me in the wind and I couldn't ignore it anymore. So I took this as a very important sign before I journey home to carry on with my autumn adventures. That day, that walk, the weather, being creative and the changing of the season to autumn was beautiful and I felt so present, so there and it was so nice to be creative and film again and do something that I loved. I realised that much of my problem throughout September was I was so go, 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 that I wasn't putting me and my authenticity into what I was doing. And I lost track of who I was, partly because I wasn't connecting to the nature around me. So then it hit me that I was doing this and something just clicked in my brain and my soul just aligned and I found balance and I cried and cried and I felt like I was crying myself out of this dissociative state but it was such a beautiful form of crying like a release then I was there back in the room and I found balance once more and I've been so curious and so inspired by what happened there what made me come back to my true self was these mundane little things that I began to do, like collecting the fur cones, finding the metaphors in nature. So I have begun to write another list. I love writing lists. <laughs> They're my favorite thing to do, so I already have one list, but now I've got a new list of just simple mundane things that I love to do in nature, and hopefully they might be able to inspire you and if you've got anything that you might want to add to this list then please let me know. but there are a couple of things on the list that at this point in the video, I hadn't even done yet. So one was decorate my home for autumn, autumnify my altar, finish a fairy wreath, fairy wreath, fairy wreath, there we go, that I started making on a Patreon live. And also I wanted to make over one of my fairy friends. So. Let's get on with that. The evenings are darker now, and it feels so right to get nice and cozy at home. The more lamps, the merrier. Tonight, I was really looking forward to having some time to myself, to unwind and just enjoy doing the little things that I love and I started by decorating the home for autumn. 
trying to get the perfect place for each item. I have decided to embrace a lot more vegetables this year as decorations as well as a pumpkin as the harvest brings so much more. But of course I am adding to my pumpkin collection each year with more and more green pumpkins. Also, a few weeks ago, a dream of mine came true when I hosted my first crafting workshop and it went so well. Together we made a fairy wreath and this fairy will protect our homes from the negative energy that may be wandering around in the darker half of the year. At the moment, I am working on one more fairy wreath to add to my collection, but before I finish it, I wanted to share with you how I made the fairy so you can make it at home. All you need is a piece of thick card, a medium sized fir cone and a seed of some sort and I am using an acorn. I made a cone shape out of the piece of A6 card, taping this to secure and then made a cross section at the smaller end to pinch the waist together. I glued the fur cone onto this to become the torso and finally glued the acorn for the head. And that is the basic structure for the fairy. Now you can add layer upon layer of fabric to make her dress, make two sticks for arms, felt or moss as hair and a little fairy hat on top. This is the fairy reef I'm currently working on and it's nearly finished now. She is the autumn moss goddess and the story behind her is that she has been working hard all year to gather her supplies for the long winter. Her outfit is made from nature and is beginning to wilt with the coming of autumn. The reef that the fairies upon only needed a few items to make the fairy stand out in the middle, so I am using my many different varieties of fur cone, covering them in more moss. And she is complete, a green mossy autumn fairy who is probably in need of a bath, but she's okay with that as she's worked hard this year to get to this point as now she's in full abundance with everything she has achieved. But the only thing is, I bought too much stuff for my fairy wreath workshop. But I didn't see that as a problem actually, at all, as now I can decorate my home with it. So it was nice to relax and potter around and create some displays with what I had left.
My altar needed one final touch before it was finished and this year I am upcycling some of my childhood decorations to fit in with where I am now. And this fairy is one of them. She used to be on my windowsill as a child and her colours used to be pink. And I think I can safely say when have you ever seen me wear pink? So she is now an enchanted fairy. And I wanted to do the same thing to this lost soul. She once belonged to my grandma and it's sad because she's just been in a box and it was nearly thrown away. So I'm going to turn this fairy into a rustic fairy to fit in with the autumn vibes, but not with too bright colours as I wanted her to fit in all year round. I love the subtle waning colours of autumn for her, creamy browns and yellows. I named her Peggy and she will be at my altar to help remind me of my inner fairy child, but also to honour my family and loved ones, which I think is very important, especially at this time of year. Peggy was now transformed into an autumn fairy, the final touch the altar needed before I share it with you and do some long overdue altar work. So I have finished my altar and I wanted to share with you some of the things that I've put there that are quite new but very symbolic to me and I wanted to just share them with you so you might get some ideas for your own altar. I have a couple more fairy spy glasses that I found. This is a huge one and it's covered in wax because I accidentally blew out wax all over my bureau the other day which was really handy. <laughs> and this one and I believe it's from a silver birch. A silver birch spyglass is something new that I haven't found before, which is really cool. I also found this little stone here too. And you might be able to see that it kind of looks like a skull. I really needed to learn a lesson one day about like a new beginning in my life. And I found this little stone beneath my feet that looked like a skull so it symbolizes death but also rebirth and I also liked how there was like a little dip here and looked like where the brain is but what fits there perfectly is a little tumbled crystal and I've been putting different crystals in it to what I am drawn to at the time and they fit in it perfectly. I think it's such a cool representation of maybe what I might be needing to attract to my own self. So this is a sword and this presented itself to me in the woods at a time of need and I figured oh my goodness that would be amazing at my altar but also because of the equinoxes have the holly king and the oak king and they have their battle and now the holly king has taken over I thought it'd be such a cool little symbol of that in the middle of my book of shadows there. I've just found also along the way just random pieces of trees this is from a yew tree the secret yew in the forest i love that tree so much and this was just something that i accidentally pulled up so this is now i thanked the tree <laughs> It was an accident, but now it's going on my book of shadows and this one I mean I find that it looks very different to me on different days Sometimes I look at it and I see a crane Sometimes I look at it and I see a stork some sort of bird usually. Yeah, this is, has a lot of Metaphors. Oh what am I seeing today? I'm seeing like a swan today Hmm, transformation maybe. And one more thing I have at my altar now is I found a new thimble container for three pounds at a charity shop. It's just, again, full of more nature and crystals and I think that these are really understated. If you ever see a thimble container, you can upcycle it as a nature slash crystal container and you will not regret it, trust me. <laughs> One thing I'm really looking forward to do more of this September and October is more altar work. In my last autumn video, I was obsessed with it and I just loved it. I was doing it every day, but because I've been so busy, again, I've been cut off from it. But that is not a bad thing. It just makes me more excited when I come back to it. So today we are going to be figuring out what some of these messages were telling me when I went on my walk the other day. I have a feeling I've already found the answers <laughs> in this video and as I went on, 
But we'll see if anything else draws itself out to us because you never know what nature might be saying. You never know what kind of metaphors it has to tell us. So let us get on with it. Gosh, I gathered a lot of stuff. Well, the leaves have turned brown. That's okay. Beach leaf. That feather. Where's the feather? I've got a feather too. Oh, the claw. Yes, the claw and the feather. I'm really upset because I had another feather too that I found in the woods and it was this half white, half black one and it was really representative of the year. I can't find it. Oh well, I think it was just what it was then and it was meaningful then at that time. But I'm sad now. <laughs> I love that feather. Maybe I'll find it somewhere around the house, hopefully. I started by laying out all of the items, but these fairy hats definitely belonged elsewhere today. <laughs> and I drew an oracle card to see what my intentions would become for this session. Calling upon my ancestors and spirit guides is this card. This is the card. Desert. I like how all the colours are very earth energy. I think that's really interesting actually. Vision Quest is a process whereby you spend a few days in the wilderness alone. I don't have three days, but I have two hours. <laughs> I think I'm going to do a bit of meditation on the items I've collected and see if anything else comes up. So that's interesting. Fur cones can be used as protection. So I'm going to surround myself with fur cones instead of crystals today to harness this energy for protection in my circle. your messages and to anything you wish to tell me. I looked for symbols in the items I had gathered. I'm not sure if I'm seeing an eye, like a winged eye or a hook today. I placed all of the items into one hand and meditated with them, writing down any words that came up here. What is this claw about? I don't know. I started to randomly draw a line on my paper with the claw shaped object and then I heard the words in my mind, ink. <gasps> oh my gosh, thank you, thank you, that is an amazing idea. This will make a mess but it needs to be done. Oh, it fits absolute like a dream. So I'm going to channel some energy through me and see what this draws. An intuitive drawing is when I close my eyes and draw with the object. Sometimes it looks weird, sometimes I know instantly what I've drawn. On this occasion, I was drawing with ink, so kept checking to see if it was running out. But on one occasion, my hand even went over to the ink pot without me realising it. Oh my god, it's going back in it by itself. Okay, that's great. This is what it underlined. Look for spirit guide signs. Very fitting. And it also underlined this. My eyes have been closed the whole time, bear in mind. <laughs> Apart from when I've checked up on the ink. That's so random, why did it want me to go to that page? 
And then this is what it's drawn. What am I looking at? A fairy? Am I seeing a fairy here? What can you see? A face, hair, wings, two feet there. This is an interesting symbol here. Maybe a rune? And actually, that is the first symbol it drew on this page before I did that. Like a play button? Interesting. What's the rune for that? We'll look that up. Oh my gosh, I'm feeling very emotional. I drew myself as a fairy. <laughs> okay. So, this is a rune I'm seeing. Um, meaning torch, revelation, knowledge, creativity, inspiration. And that definitely resonates a lot. And also, it's similar to this rune. The K rune, meaning fire and knowledge. That's really interesting. As in the woods, of course, I was drawn to the fairy fires. And fire is associated with creativity. So I think the woods were trying to tell me to embrace the creativity. Absolutely. I'm loving my new pen. <laughs> Okay, so I'm looking for just the word now. I feel like this is my wing. <laughs> oh, it looks so good there, okay. That is my wooden wing. So, a lot of things reflecting fairies and I feel like that's me embracing myself in autumn now, but also a lot of things coming up. I think I need to connect with the earth and to look out for some ancestor signs once more. And there's only one place I can go to do that. So I'm going to go there now. And, well, the next bit I just couldn't explain. As soon as I left my back gate, I found what I had lost. The feather that represented both light and darkness. And I went nuts. The messages hit me all at once and I finally understood. The feather represents the balance of the year, but also the balance of myself. The fairy I drew was me and she represents air and freedom, but also the balance and counter of this is earth and being in the woods. And this will ground me and help me through difficult situations. Just like my astral birth chart always tells me, I am both air and earth light and dark I needed to remember this during this time of year as the energy balances and then rises again. So enchanted ones, here is where the tale ends. This was the story of a girl who reconnected herself to nature by aligning herself with the season shift. She is balanced and connected, for now anyway, but it turns out that the changing of the season can do so much more than just change the colours on the trees. It can help us to change on the inside, and when we keep ourselves open and look for those signs, anything is possible. Thank you for watching Enchanted Ones, and please let me know what was your favourite below. All my love, Arwen. It's the goodest fruit. Mm -hmm. I love you. You're so cute. Yes. Mm -hmm. Jolly. Oh, so cute. So cute.